It has now been just over a year and a month since I made a video showing you guys how to fix the uh, power sliding doors and parasitic drain that happens on these Honda Odysseys. Um, that video has received over 50,000 views at the time of this uh, videoing. It has received over 50,000 views and 200 comments. So apparently it's helped a lot of people and I'm really thankful for that. That was my first video. Uh, so it, mean, it means a lot to me that a lot of people have uh, commented on it and liked it. So thank you. Now, I thought I'd make an updated video just showing how it's all turned out. I mean, you want it to last a while. So if it can't even last a year, then why bother? So that's why I'm making this video. If you are looking at how to fix your doors or you're just kind of nailing down what the problem is, then I would highly recommend going back and watching that video. I'll leave a link uh, to that video up on the screen up here somewhere or down in the comments. But in this video, I will just be talking about how it's all turned out and a couple of things that I have experienced along the way. I already know that the door closes just fine still, but I'll show it to you guys anyway, just so you know uh, that it all works. Closes nice and quick like that, so that's good. Most importantly, it's gone through a winter and a half approximately without any problems. No parasitic drain. It starts up just fine every time for us. Uh, so that's usually the biggest problem I think that people have with it is the parasitic drain. And the fact that it's still gone, that's really nice. Now, while I didn't have any parasitic drain and the doors did close just fine since that video, um, there were a couple of other problems. One of which I think was caused by the doors uh, misbehaving. The other was unrelated, but it's still worth talking about. I'll talk about the first one uh, first. Now, what happened is the battery died like a week after I fixed this, but I'm wondering if it was already dead, just not dead enough or something. Anyway, we had to replace the battery like a week after um, I fixed the doors because it quit starting. It, it was dead overnight again. And I thought, oh no, the fix didn't work or the parasitic drain is something else, but it wasn't. It was just the dead battery. So uh, we replaced that battery and it was all good. I think what happened is since the parasitic drain had drained the battery to uh, just completely dead so many times, it just ruined the battery. So then we had to replace it. So if you uh, fix the problem with your doors, you fix the parasitic drain, be mindful that your battery might be dead. You didn't realize it because it was dying because of parasitic drain beforehand. So meaning you might not have realized that the battery was also dead on top of the parasitic drain. So you might fix the doors, you might fix the parasitic drain. There's no drain, but then the battery still dies just because it's bad. So keep that in mind. Now, the second problem I'll try to explain it here in a little bit, but basically you can prevent it with maintenance. Just keep the tracks clean, keep them greased, and you should be good to go. So pretty much what was happening is the doors were just jerky. They were just rough. They weren't very smooth. And you could be like closing the door and it'd be most of the way closed. And then it would like beep, beep, beep and start reversing. It'd start opening back up or say you're opening it It'd be opening and then it'd open maybe like a foot and then it'd start closing and I almost got trapped in there a couple of times, but I didn't. Fortunately, I survived. But anyway, it was just really rough. It just, it didn't work super great. And then also what happened eventually, this was on the driver's side, by the way. What happened is the door just completely gave up the ghost. It wouldn't move in any way. I couldn't get it to move with the buttons on the dashboard. I couldn't get to move with the uh, levers on the door. I couldn't get to move with the key fob buttons. It was, it was just completely dead. It couldn't move on its own in any way. The latch was inoperable as well, so it wouldn't pull itself shut and latch properly. Not great. Um, well, I guess the, the front latch is still holding it, but the rear latch uh, wasn't holding, so that wasn't great. But anyway, to get it moving again, what I had to do was go in the driver's side fuse panel and remove fuse number seven. Um, and then I, I think I like left it out for like 30 seconds or something and plugged it back in. And then it was all good. 
but you don't want to only do that because that's like solving the symptom, but then you just ignore what caused it. So what you need to do, not only remove the fuse, you also need to clean the track. And what do I mean by that? I just mean the track up in here. This is on the side, of course. Up in here, the roller uh, slides up in there and that can get gunked up. Uh, it can get really dirty. It just needs to be cleaned out and then re-greased. Uh, and then you should be good to go. So I guess that problem with the door is just not opening and closing properly. Um, that's, that's more of a maintenance item. That's just something where you clean the tracks, you keep them clean. Uh, you re-grease them every now and then, and uh, you shouldn't have any problems. But that, that's just a maintenance item. That's not related to the latch in any way. It's its completely separate, but I still thought I'd, it's worth mentioning because if you're having problems with your doors, the latch might still be fine, but you just need to clean the track. Oh, yeah, and Joe, back to that last problem where the door wasn't working very well. There's another thing I remembered. This plastic part, you can see we've already glued it on. Sometimes that falls off. Um, and so it doesn't, that, like, that messes things up and it doesn't realize it's closed all the way or something. Um, so I, th I wonder if maybe that's caused a problem. I'll show you where that hits so you can see that it's kind of on the back side of the door. And this switch here, that's what tells, uh, one of the many things that tell, uh, the controller, the computer, whatever, that the door's closed. So... When that plastic thing back there falls off, it doesn't know that the door is actually closed or if it's open or whatever. Uh, so that can raise some things. So that happened on both sides for me. We had to re-glue that one on and it happened on their side as well. So I had to glue that one back on as well. So that is also another problem to watch out for, I guess. But yeah, some people commented on my last video uh, and they had that exact same problem uh, that I described with the track being gunked up and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it and for some people the fuse is like labeled differently there's enough variation between all the different models that uh, the circuits can be named different things uh, the same fuses can be named different things in different vans so it can be confusing uh, if you remove fuse number seven and it doesn't fix the problem then you can just remove the battery. Removing the battery, it, or disconnecting the battery, you can just disconnect the battery. Um, that is harder, obviously, harder than removing the fuse. So I'd recommend removing the fuse first. If that doesn't work, then just disconnect the battery for 30 seconds or whatever, uh, and then you should be good to go. You will have to obviously put in your um, radio code or your navigation center code if you have like the touring model or something but yes you do that and it should be all good to go anyway that's all i had to say on this video so if you liked it if it was useful give it a thumbs up uh, if you think i deserve it then subscribe to the channel got any questions leave it down in the comment section down below see you in the next one